Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. The First Presbyterian Church wishes to welcome all of you to worship today, whether in person or online. If you are visiting with us today, we are so glad that you are here. We would ask visitors to fill out the orange colored visitors information card in the pew, fill it out and place it in the offering plate later in the service. Also, if you have a prayer request, fill out the prayer request card and place it in the offering plate. Announcements? Okay, so today's the day. Uh, 4.30 to 8.30 at the Patton Ranch. Rain or shine. Um, Sandy said that we would be moving it in the barn if, it, if the weather was not good. So no worries about getting wet. Um, we have four chili crock, pot, crock pots of chili signed up, so I think we're good there. And six desserts, but you know, the more desserts, the better, so whatever. <laughs> Hope you all can come. Um, also, just a, a little bit of an early announcement for our harvest dinner. That's going to be um, November the 12th. Yeah, two weeks. I guess it's not real early. I've just been focused on this. Um, November the 12th. And um, you don't have to bring anything for the main meal, but there will be a sign-up sheet for desserts. If you want to not bring a dessert tonight, bring one then. That would be good, or you can bring it both times. Um, and I think Maggie has some more to say about that meal. It should be a good one. You don't have to bring anything to the meal, but you do need to bring something for the auction, which will follow the meal, 
you don't absolutely have to bring something. You can come if you don't bring something. Just bring your money and your, or your checkbook then if you don't bring something so you can bid on items. Um, you can start bringing things in. It, um, I want to remind you we're looking for mostly new things. This is not yard sale items, but um, bring things that you think would be something. Baked goods are always good. Um, any kind of craft thing always is a popular item. But if you're not sure, ask. And I always say, you never know what somebody's going to want. So bring it, and we will see what we can do. And if you haven't heard this, the, the money that we raise from this is going to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Thank you very much. If you're looking for a way to help the youth in this church, currently Kirk Moss Center, which is the church camp that I and many of the youth in this church attend every summer, is seeking funds. They've recently made many repairs to the camp and are struggling to find the money to keep themselves afloat. Our church does regularly donate to Kirkmont Center, but individual donations from our congregation could help the camp tremendously. So if you're able to donate, please help this camp be able to serve the youth in Ohio for many years to come. There's a QR code on the screen that will take you to the camp's donate page, or you can go to Kirkmont's website and find the donate page. Thank you. Okay, I have 50 left, 50 opportunities to bring a bag like this filled with stuffing and gravy and pumpkin and milk, okay? So I have 50 left. Not regular milk. Yeah, evac, thanks. <laughs> you know, the soup can size of carnation. Yeah, doesn't have to be carnation, just FYI. So. <laughs> All right, so who wants 10? I have them in packs of 10. Please take a moment to share the love and peace of Christ with your brothers and sisters around you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. All who are able, please stand and sing the gathering song.
morning in prayer, if we could please. Bless us, O God, with the ears to hear your truth, the vision to discern your path, and the feet ready to move into action. Open our minds and our hearts to the reading of your word, to your worship, and the honest proclamation of your truth. Ready us to respond to the Spirit's call. Amen. Our call to worship this morning is, is based on Psalm 1. So let us join together reading responsibly this call to worship. Happy are those who do not take the path that sinners tread. Our delight is in the law of the Lord. May we be like trees planted by streams of God's living water. May our lives bear good fruit, loving God and loving God. And our first hymn today is off of the hit parade that we've been singing hymns from all month long. And it's 462 in your hymn book, I Love to Tell the Story. Sin betrays us and our God. Repentance redeems and restores. 
Let us confess our sins together with the prayer found on the screens. Let us pray together. Eternal God, your law commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Too often we prioritize our own interests above the health and welfare of others. We betray you and our best selves by living without regard for the ways of our actions harm our neighbors in need and the planet entrusted to our care. Open our hearts to love. Open our minds to honestly acknowledge our role in wrongdoing. Forgive us and return us to your ways of righteousness. Amen. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Any more donut holes? No. Whew. Hi, everybody. Did you? Hi, Blake. Did uh, 
Did you guys have a storm last night? What? what? Bilingual? Very nice. So do we, we had a storm last night, right? Was it kind of a scary storm? Did anybody notice? Was it a scary one? You didn't notice? You couldn't even hear it? Uh, oh, my goodness. All right, well, we'll back out of that then. Have you guys ever been where in the middle of the night and you wake up and there's just a huge storm and there's thunder and lightning and rain and the winds are howling and it's kind of a little bit scary? You ever had that? What do you do? What's the first thing you do? You wake up and you just notice it's just kind of scary. There's thunder and lightning and wind and rain and the house, and, the, and all that kind of stuff. What do you do? Stay well, yeah, definitely stay inside. <laughs> that is a good first step. <laughs> yes, don't go outside and stay inside. Is there something maybe you do other than that? Yeah. Ah, oh, so sometimes you go to your parents, right? If you're really scared, you might go to your parents and say, oh, I'm sorry, maybe, I don't know if you get to stay in their bed or not, but you come in the room and ask for some, some sort of assurance that, uh, that things are going to be okay and the house isn't going to fall down, right? Is there anything else you might do? Uh, yes. <laughs> you got to roll today, Blake. What else would you do? <laughs> you would go downstairs and play some games in the middle of the night? At least you're staying inside. What, Hannah? Make sure it's not a tornado. That's true. That's one of the things Blake thinks. Blake thinks anytime it's raining, a tornado's going to knock our house down. And he comes to us, right, Blake? Don't you come to us and ask us and see if everything's okay? What, what do you got, Caitlin? Um, yeah, that's right. You might try to do something calming. You might pull out a book. Does any, would anybody maybe get a stuffy? Does anybody have the exact stuffy they would grab if a storm like that was happening? What is it? You have a what? You have three? Oh, my goodness. What's the best one for calming you down when there's a big storm or something? Your monkey? Does it have a name? I mean, it has to. What's his name? Monk. Very good. Love it. Anybody else have that know exactly what stuffy they would grab? Either purple sloth. Or purple sloth. Or Willie the lion or purple sloth? Well, purple sloth has gotten you through some things. I know that. Noah. You get Yoshi, not Tommy. What about Tommy Frank Grand? Yes, definitely Tommy Frank Grand. Because I don't know if you guys know, but Noah has two turtles. And well, the other one doesn't count. He has two good turtles. And one's named Tommy Brand, and the other one's named Tommy Frank Brand. What? Spring and Tino? Sprigatino? Is that an Italian food? I don't know what that means. A Pokemon named Sprigatino? I think it should be spaghetti. Yes! What? EV? You'd get an electric car? No, they said EV. Oh, another Pokemon. Okay, okay, last one. Yeah. You know what you were going to say. You were going to say that weird beaver. All right. He's totally weird. All right, but whenever we're nervous, whenever we need assurance, we have things we turn to, right? We turn to stuffies, we turn to our brothers and sisters, we turn to our moms and dads, we turn to our friends and relatives, whenever we need somebody to tell us that things are going to be okay, right? Well, I want to tell you that there's at least one more thing, 
And today's hymn that we're singing, that's our favorite hymn of the week, is Blessed Assurance. And in that hymn, it says that our assurance, that thing we can turn to during the tough times of life, is Jesus. So what I want to say is next time there's that storm, or next time there's that time, Noah, there's that time in which you're nervous and you need something, try starting with a prayer. And say, Jesus, be with me. And then you can still turn to your moms and your dads and your stuffies. Okay? We're going to pray. And this time we're going to pray together. Okay? So I'm going to say something and then you guys say something. All right? All right. Jesus. Thank you for always being with us. Remind me when things are hard that you're there with us. Love you. Amen. Break. So please stand if you're able and join with us as we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. And the words are on the screens. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Before we read our first scripture um, passage this morning, maybe I missed it, but just as a reminder about the little, the, the little bags of, of food for, the, for the, uh, the Thanksgiving boxes, if we could have those back here by next Sunday, and then if we know, if we know we still need to get like 10 or 20 more to fill out our 240, then we can do that. It won't be quite such a rush. Um, so next Sunday, if, if at all possible. I would invite you to turn in your pew Bible to page 1873. This is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. And again, that's in your pew Bible, page, page, starting on page 1873. So listen to these words. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
This is our last week of doing our favorite hymns. So if you recall, a few months ago, we asked everyone to sort of write in what their favorite hymns were, and then we took the top five, and we took the top five, and we've been preaching from that, and we're on number five with his Blessed Assurance by Fanny Crosby, and you could read in your, in your bulletin, if you'd like, a little story about Fanny Crosby and kind of who she is, more about who she is than it is about the hymn itself, but that's in there to make sure to check out. So I know everyone, I've heard lots of good things about this series and that people have enjoyed it. They've enjoyed singing all the songs that they, they've sung for a while and all the songs they like, so I'm glad that it has been something that has been appealing. Uh, I think next week we should start something different, though. So next week, we're only going to sing songs no one knows and are really hard to read. So that's next week. Be excited about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're all difficult. Only difficult, hard songs. No, I'm just kidding. But it has been a good time, and I've enjoyed doing that. Um, our scripture today is uh, Romans 8, and it's chapter... Uh, verses 31 to 39. And one of the things I've noticed about the hymns that we have picked, and not necessarily just the five hymns that we're preaching on or preaching out of, but at all the hymns, is there is almost this constant appeal to the blessed assurance. We want reminded again and again about Jesus. We want reminded again and again that Jesus is with us. We can go back to uh, blessed assurance, we can go back to in the garden, we can go back to any of the songs that we have read and sang together, and we see this reminder again and again that Jesus really is with us, that Jesus really is near us, that Jesus really is a part of our lives, that Jesus really is there with us. And so I picked the scripture that, to me, speaks the most to this blessed assurance and what this blessed assurance can do for us. And that's Romans 8. And it says, What say then shall we say in response to these things? If God is with us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave, us up, gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect, God's chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is it that condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine, nakedness or danger or sword? For it is written, for your sake we face death all day long and are considered sheep to be slaughtered. So again, verse 35 asks, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Verse 37 tells us, no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through the, him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels, Demons, the present, the future, or any powers. Neither height, nor depth, or anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear this scripture, please. I think we can see through all of our hymns that we need to hear it. We're in constant need to be reminded of this blessed assurance. Paul says, can anyone, is anyone there to condemn us if we have Christ Jesus? He says, no. 
So can anyone condemn us? No! There you go! Practically Pentecostal today. Paul asks us, can anything separate us from the love of God? Heck yeah. No. Paul even points out, and it kind of feels like a division, he says, as it is written, for we are, for your sake we face death aid all day long and are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. So Paul even stops in the middle of asking this question to remind us all that we will in fact face persecution, that we will in fact face terrible and awful things in this life, some of which we will be persecuted for our belief and love in Jesus Christ, and some of which are just because this world is pretty terrible. Some of which because there is sin, and that sin is in this world. Some of that because we live in a broken creation. But Paul even stops in the middle of explaining to us that nothing can separate us from the love of God, in, in the middle of, of, of explaining to us how nothing condemns us if Christ is for us, that nothing can condemn us to tell us that they're going to try. And don't hear this necessarily as like enemies or the demons or anything necessarily like that, though that's true. Those are just regular things in life. Regular things in life will try to separate you from God. Regular things in life, some of which seem pretty good will try to separate us from God. Busyness of life. Just the way things are. The way we're feeling that day. He even stops in the middle to tell us we're going to face all that. And then he reminds us again. He says, no. We're already conquerors. No. We've already defeated those things. We live in a world that suffers from sin. We live in a world that suffers from a separation of God. We live in a world in which the very powers that be are trying to condemn us, are trying to separate us from the love of God, and they can't do it because they've already been defeated in Christ Jesus. Remember that today. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing can condemn you if God is for you. Believe it. But you know what? I can almost guarantee that I could stand here and ask you to believe that as much as I possibly can. I can stand here and try to convince you of that. But I think we could look at all the hymns we've said, all the hymns we've sang, I think we could look at all the times we've read this scripture. I think we could look at all the times we have agreed and read the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, and we have agreed that no one can stand against us if God is for us, and we're going to go out into this world, and we're going to let things get in our way. Right? We're going to go out in this world, and we're going to act as if there's something out there that can condemn us. We're going to go out in this world and live as if we're not sure if the next thing that comes our way is something that God can commit us through. And the next time we face death or life or angels or demons, worries about the present or the future, powers, depth or height, or anything else in all creation. Next time we run into those things, maybe we'll forget again. Here's where you might not like what I have to say, because this is your fifth favorite hymn in the whole time. I don't like this hymn. I don't like it. I don't like it because it is all out of order. And I think it speaks to us of why we feel that way, why we think, oh yeah, I know Jesus is with me. Oh yes, I know that Jesus is for me. But then we go out in the world and we face these troubles or hardships or times and we try to lean on that blessed assurance and it's not always there. 
It's Fanny Crosby's fault. If you don't know, she has written hundreds of hundreds of songs. Many songs in our hymnal are standard hymnals. If you, ha if you don't know who wrote them, it's probably Fanny Crosby. And what I think happened when she went to write Blessed Assurance, or whatever it says in your hymnal, you can believe if you want. But what I think she did is she goes, I wrote 300 hymns. I got some lines left over. I'm going to stick them all together. And I don't care that they're out of order. Let's see. Blessed assurance, heir of salvation, purchased of God. Have you ever been in one of those meetings where there's whiteboards everywhere and folks tell you just to write stuff on the walls and then you're supposed to see what sticks? I think that's what she did. What's a good line for a hymn? Jesus is mine. Perfect submission. Whispers of love. Echoes of mercy. I would argue that I could sing this song in just about any order, and as long as I started with blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, you would not know I was wrong. And I really mean this part. It's all out of order. And that's why I think we have a hard time with this blessed assurance, because we think it starts with that. And it doesn't. It ends with that. Hear me and hear me now. If you have Christ Jesus as your Savior, you are saved. If you have Christ Jesus as your Savior, you will spend eternal life in a home built just for you by God Almighty. But it doesn't start with assurance. You don't feel the blessed assurance in your daily life just because of that. You see, I think as a person who doesn't believe in Jesus, as a person who doesn't know God, it actually starts with where she ends. It starts with these whispers of love, these echoes of mercy. It starts with times in which you see around the world, you see places on which maybe God is working. You see these angels descending and bring from above echoes of mercy and whispers of love. I think that's where it starts. We see someone in acts of kindness, we see places in which God is working. We start to notice and see through the cracks of the lies the world tells us. And we start to notice that maybe there is a God that loves us behind that. We start to notice that. And we find out the story of the gospel of Christ. And we believe in that story and the gospel of Christ. And what happens? We're washed in his blood and born of his spirit. And we know when we understand that we have been purchased by God, we have been purchased by God, we have been washed in his blood and born in his spirit. Now, what have we become? We have become Christians, right? And even at this time, most of us in this room believe in Jesus Christ. Most of us in this room have been washed and covered in the blood of Christ through the purchase of God. But we don't always have that blessed assurance because it continues. It continues. We learn that we are heir to the salvation of God. We learn that we are heir to the salvation of God. We learn that there is a future for us. We learn that there is a future for us that could be here. And we begin to see with our visions of rapture. We begin to see this foretaste of the glory divine, which is her second line. It's too early. We begin to see this God. We begin to see this divinity. We begin to see God at work. We begin to see God in this world. And we know who we are. And we know whom we belong to. But now we go down to verse 2. And this is where we miss it, I think. We have Jesus. We have him as our Savior. But if you want blessed assurance, then you need perfect submission then you need perfect delight. And obviously, none of us are perfect. None of us can be perfect. But part of blessed assurance is then submitting to God's will. 
Part of blessed assurance is delighting in what God would have for you in this world. Is delighting in the life that he has set out for you. It's believing that God has a plan and a mission for you. It's believing that you are part of this. That not only do you have faith that Jesus died for you, but you submit to his will and his plan. You delight in what he would have for you. You delight in his rules, his laws. More than that, you delight in the love of neighbors. You delight in when you see these whispers of mercy and whispers of love. You delight in sharing that gospel with others. You delight in the life that he would have for you. Once you do that, then you get the blessed assurance. The blessed assurance requires submission. The blessed assurance requires delight. The blessed assurance requires that we live a life after him. And too often we think, I'll live that life when I feel that feeling. When I know God's going to get me through, then I'll live the life God has for me. When I know that this is 100% exactly what God would have for me, then I'll do it. When I don't have any discomfort, when it's easy, when it aligns with my already preconceived notions and thoughts, when it fits what I would have do anyway, when it lines up with my theology, when it lines up only with what I have already believed and the thoughts I already have and the plans I already have for my life. When I have that blessed assurance, then I will submit and delight. We don't like that word. We don't like the word submission. We don't like that word. But all it really means is that when we see something in Scripture, when we feel something from the Holy Spirit, and we see that it's counter to how we're living, we see that it's calling us to a life that's not quite the life we have right now, that we don't ignore it. That we try to repent. That we change our direction. We can look at Scripture, and I always think about the story in which the Israelites are lost in the woods or they're lost in the wilderness and it's more desert than woods obviously but they're lost in the in the desert in the wilderness what do they do do they always know what God would have for them do they always know what they should be doing no but they follow this pillar of smoke the Bible tells us or this pillar of fire in the nighttime and whenever it moves they move and I think, and I think, that when we see, we might not always see it every day, but when you see where God is working, where you see where God is directing you, when you see that pillar of fire, you see that smoke, and you see it moving, and you follow it, that's submission. When you delight in following it. And when we have that, then we have that blessed assurance that she starts with. Amen. Let's all sing our, our next hymn, which is number 839. <laughs>
Please be seated. And I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward as, pre as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings back to the Lord. Please join with me in the unison prayer of dedication on the screens, please. Holy God, these offerings are only a portion of all you have given us. We gratefully entrust these gifts to your care and Christ's ministry. May these gifts reflect our love for our neighbors in need, blessing others as we have been blessed. Amen. Please be seated. to make sure everybody noticed this is we, we got this insert in here because next week is all saints day and so we'd like to remember all those that meant to us who passed away not just church members or, and so if you have if someone in your life that you care about passed away whether it's connected to this church or not um, and you'd like to remember them please put them on this and and if you haven't or drop them in the offering plates as they'll be back there and then next week they'll be a part of of our time of remembrance uh, next week. Um, and one thing that kind of came to mind just while I was standing here, uh, first of all, I forgot about the third verse, the hymn when I was doing the sermon today, but also one of the things that, uh, that, that I thought of was is oftentimes when we think about whether or not we have to follow our will or God's will, we think that God's will for our lives is so very different than our will for our lives. And you know, I tend to think, not that it's never, I tend to think that most of the time, it's pretty close. You know? Like in myself, I can't say by any means that I always follow God's will, but if I'd had designed my life, um, if I'd had designed my life 25 years ago, a lot of it would look exactly like it does. Right? I Hopefully I'd still be married to Diana, I'd still have four kids, I'd still have a house, I'd still have a minivan, I'd still have 
I still have too much debt, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, the difference would be I probably wouldn't be doing this, but I'd still have a job, I hope. And, you know, so a lot of, I think, a lot of, of my life, and I, I tend to find that I think a lot of when we follow after God, it's not necessarily creating this life that we would hate to have. It's not necessarily creating this life that's so completely different. It's almost creating more like the perfect life that you would have. You, you want to have a good relationship with your kids? God does too. You, you want you to have a good, uh, meaningful career? God, God does too. It might be completely different than the career you would have picked, but God does too. God wants you to have good and strong relationships. God wants you to have friends. God wants you to do a lot of these things. And so I think that often, following after God's will, we, we think of it as some scary, dangerous, this, this awful thing that we might do, this thing that's going to really ruin our plans. And you know what? Sometimes it does, because some people have a life that's completely different than they would have ever picked because they followed after God, and that's true. But I think for most of us, it's a better life than we would have on our own. Our prayer request, we have a prayer request from Jennifer for Jennifer Copas Summers, who passed away on Friday from breast cancer. So prayers for her loved ones. Prayers for David Latart. It says the bike guy. Prayers for him because he had a stroke. And prayers for Patsy Bryant who is in hospice care. Lord God, we come before you in prayer today in needs and wants and desires. But Lord God, what I would like and what I would want for each of us gathered here today is that we have the courage to follow your will, the courage to follow after you, so that when we see you move, we follow after you. So that there are those times in our life that may be many and may be few, in which we look and we see God working and we see God pulling us a direction that we go that way. Lord God, I pray that each and every one of us could have the blessed assurance of knowing not only that God saved us and granted us eternal life, but he is here with us and that there is nothing in all creation that can condemn or separate us. And I continue to pray by saying that which you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's all stand and sing our closing hymn, How Great Thou Art.
all who are able. We can see you guys at the patents today at 430. Um, we got a lot going on over the next couple weeks. It's kind of that time of year. So we have our uh, next week is All Saints Day, and then, and then the week after that, we have uh, the week after that's the Harvest Luncheon, and, and hopefully our meeting to elect officers. And then the next week is Winter Youth Retreat, which at this point we have about 10 kids going, so we're, we're excited about that. And then it follows up, and we're talking about Thanksgiving, and we're rolling into Christmas. So we got lots going on, and we're happy to see that. But for now, let's go forth in the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the united power of the Holy Spirit. Amen?